Hello, everybody. We have another case right here of an unidentified child that we are needing help to get solved. She was found in Madisonville, Texas. I want to share with you the for all the information that we have about her, and hopefully somebody can help us identify her. So let's get into this. This picture of a little girl's feeding tube is being released publicly for the first time as investigators in Madison County, Texas, try to solve a homicide case. Sheriff, Sheriff Travis, Travis Neely, Neely was, at was at the scene, scene that, that day. day. It, was it was a weekend. weekend. I, think I think it was a Saturday. Saturday. I was at home doing odds and ends. It was September 17th, 2016. The call came in about skeletal remains found in a pasture off a highway. Well, at that point, I'm thinking, you know, somebody got killed and dumped out there. And I get out there, and it's all in a little bitty container, suitcase, and some bags. And from observation of the suitcase, it's not a way out of it. This is going to be a child. The unidentified little girl was between two to six years old when she died. She was wrapped in garbage bags inside a black suitcase. She was wearing a pink dress and a diaper. What's going through my mind is, oh my God, what happened here? What happened to this child? How did this child wind up over here? This is Interstate 45. It's the main highway between Dallas and Houston. Even though it's easy to get here from just about anywhere, this crime scene is really in the middle of nowhere. No neighbors, no street lights, no nothing. To help identify the little girl, forensic artists at the National Center created this picture. Experts believe she was Caucasian or Hispanic and had thick, dark hair. And new genealogy research now shows she also has Native American lineage. The little girl's remains reveal that she had a medical condition called micronathia. Her jaw appeared small and affected her ability to eat on her own. She was found with a feeding tube and would have required medical care during her life. Investigators hoped her feeding tube would lead them to answers. It has a number on it. So we thought, yes, okay, we're going to get somewhere. The problem is we found out it was a standard manufacturer number, and they send out thousands of those around the world. So there was very little record keeping and tracking of what lot went where. While she was found in Texas, a deeper look at the pollen grains on both her remains and the suitcase she was found in suggest she was from somewhere in the southwest U.S. or just below that region in Mexico. It's even more likely she was from southeast Arizona. It sends all sorts of chills through your mind. How in the world are we going to go about figuring out this case? figuring out who this is and why this happened, how this happened. Sheriff Neely is asking for your help to identify this little girl. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. Okay, guys, so that is the totality of information that we have for little Madisonville Jane Doe. I don't know how anybody could just put their child in a suitcase, in bags, and just toss them out like garbage. It, it makes no sense to me how people can think that that's okay. How can they be okay with their self doing something like that? And that one, there's so many other options. Like why? If she's sick, take her to a doctor, take her to a hospital. What, what is the problem? 
I don't understand from what I have read. And like I said, that's basically the, in a nutshell, the totality of information was what was in that video, but I've seen nothing that says a, that they've pinned down a cause of death or anything of that nature, which would lead me to believe that perhaps it could have been natural causes. I mean, she did have a medical condition that affected her ability to eat and, from what I've researched on that medical condition, it could also affect her ability to breathe on her own without having some type of like a CPAP or oxygen of some sort. So that's a possibility that she could have accidentally passed away. Maybe she didn't get the oxygen that she needed and you know, that, kind of thing but anyway it doesn't matter how she died it matters that she's a little girl between the ages of two and six and she doesn't have a name she doesn't have a proper burial with her name on a headstone and people that love her and care about her to maintain her grave and those sort of things and it is so very heartbreaking. We're seeing so many of these children's cases that are starting to creep up and I just will never be able to wrap my head around how people think that children are just disposable. It's, it's disgusting and it's not, it's not something we need to, to sit by and stand for. We've got to start speaking up and start being a voice for these children but if anybody, if you recognize her or think you might know her, especially if you're in that Arizona area, they have really nailed down. They believe she is from that little southwest corner there of Arizona. If you have any information on that, please give them a call at 1-800-THE-LOST and tell them what you know so we can try and get this little girl her name back. She at least deserves that much to have her name back in her, in her death. And thank you all for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that like button for me if you don't mind and everybody stay blessed and I will catch y'all on the next one.